Yesterday, I started breaking up or removing this concrete from this joint to the joint right behind the traco because it was terribly broken up. It looked like just pretty much all of it, except for a few random big pieces. And I'm just going to replace it in kind with uh, a new slab. It's my understanding there was an apartment here from the lady who used to live here. She died before we acquired a property at a sheriff's sale. Um, she said something about an apartment here. And I did dig up some cast iron pipe. And I did dig up some a little bit of galvanized pipe. So I don't, I wish I had some history of this slab, why it was so weird. But anyway, I wasn't going to film it, but I changed my mind. So I'm going to film it. And removing the concrete is easy. Uh, breaking it into manageable size pieces is where the challenge is because I need to be able to put this on my friend's trailer without breaking his trailer. And we're gonna bring it to his property and kind of spread it around and kind of improve some dirt roads he has, make them more passable. So I'm trying to break these up as I go. And that's pretty much where the work is. Just as far as grabbing the big hunks, I could, I could probably just grab this big hunk right here and lift it up and drag it out. But then I can't deal with it, so I gotta break it up. But first, I'm gonna get our um, little post out of the way so we can drive around for the next few days and this thing was nailed by a trailer and i didn't do it see it's got a lean to it but anyway it's just stuck in the dirt it'll come out and get it safe and sound to the side with my new keypad so it doesn't get boogered up when we moved the houseboat into and out of my yard i was able to grab this post and wiggle it and pick it up by hand but i guess in the in the last few years, I've lost some upper body strength. I cannot pick it up. So, uh, Traco to the rescue. I just wanted to make sure it didn't fall over and smash my new keypad. Set this little grate over the hole where the post was because I don't want anybody to break an ankle. And this grate was in the slab that I broke up. I couldn't tell where it went because the pipe crumbled. But it's stainless steel. I've never seen a stainless steel floor grate. In all the work I've done in water and sewer plants, I've never seen a stainless steel floor grate. Okay, my goal is to put as much of the rubble on this side of the drive as there will be room for. And pieces like this, my foot is, are too big. So I'm gonna break them. And the way I'm breaking them is I'm putting the blade about halfway like right here and then i grab that edge with the bucket and pull up until it pops um, breaking it with hydraulic force not with by beating on the bucket and wearing out all my pins and everything i'm just using the muscle to break the slabs and sometimes they break easy and sometimes they don't break as easy this is not a how-to video um this is just documenting what i did um, this house is very old. This house that's in front of my house. In, in this neighborhood, these are called teardown houses. People buy them just for the lots because it's a very desirable location. So when I'm gone in 10 years, this will probably be sold and this house will probably be torn down. Um, so I just wanted a nicer driveway in the meantime. Um, I cut lots of corners on the dirt work. I didn't do much compaction. I just pretty much left the dirt like it was form work is kind of sketchy um, the concrete work was not like up to military standards and I know that I'm okay with that um, so all you concrete nerds don't like me sending us dirty messages because I know everything we did probably could be second guessed but uh, just just enjoy the video and relax take a chill pill thank you
Sometimes it's obvious from these videos that I'm not far enough up on the stone to hold it securely. But the view from the operator seat is not nearly as good as the view from this little camera after the fact. So uh, yeah, if I could see better, I could probably get a better grip on them every time. But sometimes I just, uh, like right here, I'm way too far back.
Okay, I've been a bad boy and hadn't been filming. Um, Shane, my neighbor, came by with his dump trailer. And we filled it up. Well, we didn't fill it up, but we put as much weight as he cared to haul, which was more than I thought it would haul. So the pile where the trico is sitting is gone. He's supposed to be coming back, and we think we can get this pile on the trailer. Um, maybe I'll catch some video of that. And I got this form set. It's pretty much exactly where the edge of the concrete was. And I cannot get a stake in the ground. Um, the ground is hard as a rock. I can't get them in. They just go a ways and they stop. Now, <clears throat> along the form board, I think there was a block structure. And it may be a footing for it down there. Because I'm digging up all kinds of pieces of block. So I thought if I'd put these little offsets like this one, I'd get out past that. But that didn't do any good. That stake won't get, go in either. So... Uh, Steve, my friend who's going to uh, place and finish the concrete, he's got metal pins and he's got son of a guns that can drive them. So I'm just going to try to get the forms in the right place with enough stakes so they'll stay in the right place and I'll let him brace them off when he gets here. I'm just kind of raking, cutting roots. Uh, I'm not setting grade because I don't have a form on this side to pull strings to. You know, the original concrete was in a straight line. And it was really high above the dirt, like six inches. It was an ankle breaker. And it was hard for the lawnmower to jump up and down. So I'm gonna come from this concrete and slope it down maybe four or five feet. And the same on that end. And this whole side is gonna be maybe two inches lower than it used to be. And that'll be good because a lot of this concrete is like six inches thick, which means it wouldn't have enough fill in there if I just wanted to put the form back where it was without pouring six inch concrete, which I don't want to do. So if I lower this form a little bit, uh, I think this fill quantity will work out just right. So while I'm waiting on Shane and the trailer, I've just been kind of hand raking, uh, picking up rocks and cutting roots and just kind of neatening it up. It's not the grade yet, but it should be fairly close. My root collection from under the slab my theory is uh, you get a crack in that walk in the concrete and water goes down in the crack and the tree roots get to that water and they say this is nice. So they grow bigger and they crack the concrete more. You get more water, you get more roots and it's a vicious cycle. And eventually I think what turned that concrete slab into rubble was all these roots. There are some big ones down there. Shane is back with his trailer. Um, it's not a new trailer, but it's not all beat up either. So I was pretty careful or as careful as I could be about dropping the stones into the bottom. I was trying to lower them all the way and place them. And I really couldn't see over the edge of the trailer until I got it almost all the way loaded. I couldn't see what I was doing. So I'd kind of just go down until I could kind of see the trailer move and I, know, I would know my bucket was at or close to the bottom. And I gave Shane my phone and he did all this filming. He's like the best filmer that I've ever had. So we got some pretty good shots if you're interested in watching concrete get loaded. Um, doesn't get much better than this as far as the photography goes. And f for the most part, my little Hitachi uh, John Deere machine which was picking up one stone at a time. Every now and then I would get lucky and grab two stones. But uh, it's a, sh short, a short swing. I was not swinging over his truck. I never would do that. So I would just grab my stone and swing it and let it go. Now, this little thumb is kind of amazing. I don't know how it works, but once you grab on to the stone, you can use other hydraulics. You can track, you can swing, you can, you can move the bucket, and somehow or another, the thumb knows how much pressure to keep so you don't drop the stone. I, I, I think I dropped one sizable stone the whole time I was loading. So, yeah, I don't understand how the thumb works, but it works really, really well on this little machine.
okay i got this side form set and i got it sagging down in the middle about an inch and a quarter because it didn't need to be so high it just made it trip hazard coming off the edge of that slab and i cannot get any stakes in the ground there's some sort of footing down there so i think i figured out this uh i think this was a, an apartment because there's a slab here there was a floor drain that just drained into the ditch so i'm thinking maybe that was a shower um there's an electrical wire here that goes who knows where. It might even be hot for all I know. I hadn't messed with it. And there's a one inch PVC coming off the other side. So there's a foundation on that side. And on this side, there's traces of concrete block everywhere. So I think there was an apartment before this slab was poured. And this, pour, this slab was poured around those brick pillars that were in the middle. So I, that's that's what I think. Anyway. I've been raking and dragging and cutting roots and uh, the sun's hammering on me right now so i've slowed down a lot i got this little pile of dirt to deal with and then i'm gonna pull string sideways to make sure i got my four inches and uh shane should be back in a minute with the dump trailer we're gonna load them up for load number three okay this is the morning we're placing concrete steve is here his crew is not here yet uh, i just backed up parked kind of getting ready scoping it measuring it he's got this buggy this powered buggy he no longer pours out of a tailgate of a truck almost 100 percent pours with this little buggy he can put the concrete right where he wants it and uh, this is what he does okay so the rainy day concrete crew also couldn't get stakes in the ground so it makes them feel a little bit better so they're putting outriggers and putting the stakes way back <clears throat> and they're putting a lot of them there each one is not very strong but in the aggregate hopefully it'll hold a fan up front the concrete had failed it looks like maybe there was a stump under it that rotted away i don't know it's like a circle that just sunk down so we uh put a cut on both sides and i took out the stone for the concrete and we freshened this up with a new little slab would have been nice to replace the whole thing but uh not, maybe later not this not this day not this year we are going to dry divide the slab into four quarters with a metal keyway driving their stakes for that they use treaty pine stakes and drive them below grade and we'll just leave them in the concrete probably people have something to say about that but that's the way we do it that's the way steve does it the ground is very hard and very full of debris so they're having a hard time finding spots that the stakes will drive but they're going to do it they're doing it Okay, so the crew cut the concrete and I removed it and I probably should replace the whole dang driveway, but I'm replacing the worst part right now. Then we'll get over here and put some forms and level out the dirt and drop some wire in here. So while I was busy removing that concrete from that patch job up front, Steve's guys put in a uh, keyway and some wire mesh and they put some dowels into the old concrete, kind of stabilize everything. This one's ready to place. Truck just drove up. Uh, I think it has nine yards. And it'll be an order back. Probably a couple of you. Couldn't get enough to pour. So we didn't want to like order 10 and have to order back a half. So we'll order nine. We'll order back whatever we got up to make it finish. This is the Whiteman buggy. This is a pretty cool machine. I usually enjoy bantering with the truck drivers. They're usually a bunch of good guys, but this guy was an exception. Kind of had a chip on his shoulder. He wouldn't get off the phone. He wouldn't listen to Steve. Wouldn't take instructions. Started putting water in the concrete before we even asked it, and we ended up not wanting any. Or Steve didn't want any. He was just a turkey. Um, usually these guys are pretty good, but uh, not so much this, this guy. like on the phone not listening to anything anybody says <clears throat> And 
this is the physical part pushing the concrete to where you want it to go it's 150 pounds a cubic foot it's not a liquid not a solid but it's not a liquid I get, well i guess you have to call it a liquid but you gotta be strong yeah second buggy full i'm pulling up the wire so it's not in the dirt I'm trying to get it up into the concrete which is nice to see it's like one more bucket is going to do it this is what i like to see in a crew everybody's busy nobody's yelling at each other everybody knows what to do just get out of the way nothing has been said between steve and his guys Now. Breaking it down. Looks like they got too much. They'll probably shovel it back into the buggy and we'll put it in the big slab. Back in the buggy. Now that the concrete is created off, this is a bull float or magnesium float or aluminum float. It has a high coefficient of friction, so it is pulling the moisture to the surface and at the same time pushing the rocks down a little bit. And they make it look easy. So Steve has left this group and he is back getting ready to dump concrete the first load forms in the back. Steve is cruising along with the concrete bucket and it is full. I think the truck's been here 10 minutes and they got this slab full floated out and the uh, finisher went to help back in the back. And there's Steve with another uh, 21 cubic feet. There's 27 cubic feet in the yard, three times three times three. And the yard weighs 4,100 pounds roughly. So that little machine has uh, over 3,000 pounds of concrete in it. it. That's my guess. It just glides along. Luckily, it hadn't rained here forever, so the grass and the ground is hard as a rock. Not leaving any ruts at all. If it was a rainy week, like in the middle of the winter, they'd have to throw down plywood, which he keeps with him. Breathing the first square, and this this uh, concrete is not real wet, fairly dry. So this is a uh, back-breaking work if you're not used to it. These guys are pretty tough, though. Building up the second square. That little buggy jumps down the curb like it's not an issue. I think they also make these buggies with tracks, so uh, if you got softer ground. nine yards and we ordered back a yard probably don't need but a half a yard but you can't order less than a yard it just showed up probably a 20 minute wait maybe a 30 minute wait and uh concrete's here so we're gonna pour it out real quick or they're gonna pour it out real quick and just like that they're finished catching that little corner 
They didn't pick up these forms, which is okay, but they picked up the forms in the front. And we'll be driving on this in two days, probably. And it is 200% uh, better than it was. Rainy day concrete. Yeah. Give them a call if you need concrete done. Right? Yep. All right, good. good. Thank you, guys. All right, great. And the one in the front, all finished up. Yeah, it would have been nice if I'd have replaced the whole thing, but maybe uh, maybe next year we'll replace some more. But this is it for now. I got a lot of dirt work to do with the shovel, doing all these edges. And here's the man, Steve Turbo Switzer, the boss. Okay, a day or two later, got it backfilled pretty well. My dirt is dust because it hadn't rained in a month, but it's supposed to rain tonight, so. I'm sure I'll have to come back and redo it. I reset the post. I set the post level this time, and now the keypad looks crooked. Can't win. Um, this pile of rubble is going to the country bucket by bucket because we have a lot of little potholes in the road and things that this would be good for. And same with that little slab in the front. It's all finished, cleaned up, backfilled. Uh, Shane's supposed to be here in the next day or two or three to uh, grab the rest of this broken concrete. And after that, I can bring the mini hoe in the back. I'm gonna paint it. I know nothing about painting equipment, but uh, can't go wrong, huh, right? Anyway, uh, that's it. So thanks for watching. And the criticism on what we did wrong can now commence. <laughs>